out by theta. For the theta fans in the audience, I doubt I have to explain what Dear Evan Hansen is. For the rest of you, though, 2017 was a phenomenal year for Broadway theater. The, a Bronx Tale, The Great Comet, Falsettos, Come From Away. You might not have heard of all these shows, but the theater geeks like me in the audience definitely have. Still, in such a crowded year, there was a clear standout, Dear Evan Hansen. It won six Tony Awards, including Best Musical, the Grammy for Best Original Soundtrack, and even an Emmy for its performance on The Today Show. I was fortunate enough to recently have seen Derrick Hansen on Broadway. But more importantly for this talk, I also got to perform a song from it, perhaps the most iconic song of the whole show, You Will Be Found. When it plays, I don't know how it's going to make you feel, right? Every song can make people feel a wide range of emotions. You might listen to it and be annoyed because it's vague or it's inspirational or it's overly cheery. You might start crying. When I was in rehearsals for it, plenty of people did. You might forget it the second it stops playing. I don't know. That said, I doubt it makes many people angry. This song, makes me angry. Why? Let's go back to the title. You will be found. According to standard English conventions, there is something wrong with that statement. You will be found is in passive voice, or in plain English, it's phrased in a way that it removes the subject of the sentence. You know who is going to be found, that's you but you don't know who is going to do the finding. This central figure in the song, the one who's actually taking action, is completely erased. Over and over, they're referred to throughout the song. There's someone who will come running. They're a friend to carry you. <clears throat> From across the silence, your voice is heard, the song says, but by who? Even in the context of the show, it's not even a real person that they're singing about. Yes, it's someone who lived, but the relationship is a lie. It's something Evan makes up because he wishes it were true. It's set in the end, the song just comes back to passive voice. You will be found. That said, why does this matter? Dear Evan Hansen is a show that is beloved by so many people, and this song in particular. Dear Evan Hansen has been embraced by sufferers of anxiety, of depression, because it's finally given them a chance to see someone like them, someone with mental illness, on stage. There are people who say that you will be found is what gets them through suicidal thoughts. And look at this. Look at all of that fan art on just that one song. Clearly, it's beloved. So how come I sat in rehearsal for it every week, feeling bitter and resentful? Why does this song make me angry? Why couldn't I just shut up and learn to love it? It's a bit of a long story, but I'll summarize as best as I can. You see, I'm that someone to come running, that friend to carry you. I go to resident camp, sleepaway camp, and so some of my best friends in the world, I only see once a year, but we text almost obsessively. And so when one day in the middle of gym class, I got the text, I think I'm anorexic, I became the friend in the song. I was the one who emailed her guidance counselor asking for help. I was the one who talked her out of it when she decided she wasn't going to eat for 14 days. And when her struggles turned out to be far greater than I could have imagined, I stayed on the phone for hours on end talking about anything and everything to distract her from the urge to cut her own skin. I stayed up every night 
arguing about how she does matter and people would miss her if she took her own life. For a month and a half, I couldn't rid myself of this constant feeling of anxiety, of the fear that one day the texts would stop and my friend would be gone. And all the while, every week I was going into rehearsal to sing You Will Be Found. All I saw was that one song, and it made and it used my struggles, what I was doing, as a throwaway plot device, as a symbol of hope, as something that seemed easy to give and receive. It took my sleepless nights and anxious days and made them look easy. So I thought I was crazy. I knew that there had to be people out there who had the same experiences as me, but I looked around and I didn't see anyone falling apart over their friends. So I figured I was broken. I was crazy. You hear a lot of discussion about representation in media. Usually it's framed as depicting different races, genders, and sexual orientations on screen. What people tend to miss, though, is it's not those superfluous details that matter. Not really. It's the inward traits that they create. It's not about showing black people in films. It's about showing what it's like to be black. If you talked to my friend, she would tell you that we need more stories about people who struggle with mental illness and suicide and depression. And she got that in Dear Evan Hansen. I would agree. But for me, if there had been just one story, one book or movie or musical that talked not about the suicidal one, but about their best friend, it would have been enough. I wouldn't have thought that I was insane, that I was alone. But instead, three months later, I still have trouble shaking that feeling. All it would have taken was one story to show me that my feelings were valid, that I wasn't alone. It is the duty of everyone who creates art to show the diversity of experience that so often our media lacks. Everyone has one way that they've felt alone, one story that they've lived but never heard told. It's our duty to share those experiences and make them represented. As for me, I'm doing that too, the only way I know how. On March 5th, 2019, my first piece was published, and it didn't happen the way I always imagined it. It's not flash fiction like I tend to write, not sci-fi or fantasy or literary. It's this, this story. It's a memoir, 795 words, about my life this past December. If one person finds it when they're searching around on the internet and realizes that they're not the only one, they're not broken, they're not crazy, it'll be enough. It can't fill that void or erase their pain. I don't think anything can, but it's something. Thank you.